Hello, I'm Dr. Barbara Coffey, Director of the Tourette Association of America, Center of Excellence for Tourette Syndrome at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And I'm Gardner Comfort. I have Tourette Syndrome, and I'm an actor, teacher, and writer, and a patient from Dr. Coffey's. So Gardner, tell me about when Tourette's was diagnosed and what that was like. So I was diagnosed when I was seven years old. Um, I started having symptoms. Um, my parents tell me when I was about five um, and was very lucky to have, you know, um, the opportunity to meet up with a play therapist here in New York City um, in the mid-80s who, uh, who delivered a prompt diagnosis and, um, and uh, began my, you know, journey through, uh, you know, various treatments. Mm -hmm. And what were your symptoms at first? So my first symptom, my mother said, um, was licking my finger and wiping my lips, which is far more kind of OCD or kind of like habit-based than any tics I've ever experienced since. But um, they quickly kind of morphed into more typical Tourette's tics. I think I would shake a bit before my parents really knew what it was. My dad would uh, mention in car rides, if I were in the back seat, like, oh, you're dancing back there? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you know, it would morph to kind of high-pitched throat noises or knocking my knees together. And then, of course, they changed, uh, you know, dramatically in different phases throughout my life. Mm -hmm. So you've been living with this for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I'm 36 now, so it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a long, uh, long period of, uh, of, 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 you know, struggles and, and enlightenments, but, uh, but a lot of struggles. <laughs> So, yeah. Certainly. So after the play therapy, what other kind of treatments have you had? What kind of medications? Um, I was on medication quite early um, and have been on quite a number of medications up till now, and I still am. Um, you know, I can randomly uh, list some of them. I was on ORAP at one point, I was on Risperdal, uh, I was on Topamax. I mean, and I really can't necessarily remember, it's kind of um, just the path that I went down with a, you know, a, a different Tourette specialist and, uh, and my parents. Um, some of the you know, medications were helpful. Um, none of them was like a silver bullet, uh, it, it, at least not in a long-term way. You know, uh, I, oftentimes um, being on medication initially, <coughs> would deliver a lot of results, but then inevitably it would sort of die down or I would plateau or, or I would have side effects. Um, but I've done all types of treatments. I, um, I actually participated in what was really interesting a few years ago um, at uh, Columbia Presbyterian here in New York of transcranial magnetic stimulation mm -hmm. where they would treat me periodically every day, <laughs> um, <clears throat> putting a sort of magnetic coil, they called it, in my head and, you know, um, sending magnetic pulses through my body. Um, and that did help, um, but once the, the trial ended, I, I wasn't getting it anymore and it had no lasting effect. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, you know, treatments don't seem to uh, be able to compete with uh, the, uh, the Tourette's that surges through me. Mm, it sounds like it. It sounds like you've <laughs> investigated many different kinds of treatment. And yeah. you're saying medication, even as a child, caused some side effects? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, um, <clears throat> kind of sleepiness, um, had some weight gain for a while there. Um, incidentally, I, I at some point um, um, was on Ritalin, not for Tourette's, obviously, in seventh grade because I was such a, you know, I was such a distracted student, and it helped really well, actually. I remember the one moment, I, the, the night I took it for the first time, it was like a, a light bulb went off, and I went in my room and, like, wrote this essay perfectly. Um, but as you probably know, the, the Ritalin made my tics go crazy, so I couldn't stay on it. <coughs> um, but I've done all manner of things. In fact, nowadays I don't eat gluten um, because a voice doctor suggested that given my, my sort of throat clearing tic, um, it, 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 it might help. And it has. Um, and I stay away from caffeine as best I can um, and exercise a lot. Mm. So you've learned to manage it, it sounds like. Yeah. A long journey of different types of medication and the transcranial magnetic stimulation. Mm -hmm. What about um, psychological treatments, um, therapeutic interventions? Uh, there's a 
intervention that we've been recommending for many people in the last four or five years called CBIT, mm -hmm. Comprehensive Behavioral Intervention for Ticks. I do CBIT now. Um, mm -hmm. I found it to be really useful uh, in a way that um, medication and most of my other treatments haven't because it's quite hands-on and I'm, I'm learning how to be in control of uh, my ticks. So, <laughs> in my experience with CBIT, um, I've worked with um, Dr. Freed here in your office uh, on, um, on um, a, a, just a really interesting way of kind of analyzing each one of my ticks, you know, se segregating them and sort of looking at what they are, you know, physically, what am I doing? Um, you know, I, I dig my toes in my shoes really hard. Um, when does it happen? What am I feeling? Um, what is the result? Et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and then creating a competing response. Um, so for instance, with the, the toe curling, I will lift my heels up so that my, my toes and the balls of my feet are flat on the ground. And in order to do the tick, I'd have to remove, I'd have to move out of that position. So I just sit with that when I feel the urge. I, I time it mm -hmm. for at least a minute or until the urge goes away. And then I just keep doing it. And that tick is basically gone. Um, That's impressive. Yeah. And then I've moved on to, we've, we've moved on to every other tick, which uh, is kind of overwhelming. But um, when I think about the amount of energy and time it takes to tick, um, CBIT has been just vastly uh, superior. And it's, it's just, it's incredible. Um, well, it's interesting to hear your experience because from a scientific and medical perspective, this is these days our first go-to treatment for most patients with Tourette's. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting because I imagine you've been working on the what we call pre-monitory or pre-tick experience where you draw upon mm -hmm. a feeling, a sensation you might have in your body, an urge that then morphs into the tick. And if you can grapple and grasp onto that urge, you can then move that tick in a different direction. It's really interesting. Um, all through my life, I, I, I just sort of thought of the ticks as inevitable. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and sometimes they are. But I will say that um, training, uh, you know, um, myself to, to anticipate the tick and to feel the urge and to just work bit by bit at um, recognizing the urge for what it is. It's just an urge. You know, the tick isn't inevitable. And with the competing responses, I've been able to kind of like, in a Pavlovian way, um, train myself to do something else. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still working on the vocal ticks. Those are, as you know, the hardest. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, as I said, my toe, my, my toe curling tick is, is more or less gone. Um, other, you know, uh, motor ticks are, are, are way decreased. And I was saying to uh, um, some people on, that on the way up here today, um, mm -hmm. or the last few hours, you know, riding the subway in New York City, going to, you know, stores to do uh, Christmas shopping, I was doing um, the competing response of breathing and timing myself, and I, you know, had, you know, long periods of time where I wasn't ticking. Mm -hmm. um, I think now just the pressure's on, I'm ticking a little bit, but, you know, it's certainly not as much as it would have been in the past. Which is great news, and I presume no side effects, unlike no. medication. Exactly. I mean, well, I think what is really different between this and medication and really any other treatment where I'm not doing something hands-on mm -hmm. is <coughs> there's like a, an empowering nature to it where I am in control of it. Um, I'm not trying to control my tics in the way that, you know, people would suggest, you know, throughout my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm <coughs> seeing them come and choosing to divert my, um, my, um, my uh, reaction. And that's been really exciting because it shows me that I have a choice and I have an opportunity to just, you know, on my own, do something different. Um, it's been just, just fascinating, really. And, and as you say, yeah, the, the side effects are that I don't tick. Right. Uh, um, if nothing at all. So, mm -hmm. Do you um, practice your competing responses at home? Because that is one kind of side effect. You have to actually work with this. I'd right. like just taking a pill. That's a good, that's a good point. It's, it takes much more time. Um, and there are times when I'm like, oh, God, you know, it's, it's, I, you know I went through whole, the whole day. I forgot to time myself, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, the amount, again, the amount of time I, I, I do outside of the, um, the office 
is, you know, it's just so much simpler than you know, side effects from medications or complications with, um, you know, health insurance and all that. <coughs> um, so yes, I do, I do spend quite a lot of my time on my own uh, doing this and keeping track of it and then I'll come into the office and, and give Dr. Freed my, you know, my splits, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Do you think the urge really then reduces or goes away, for example, the toe curling one after you've learned your competing response and keep working on it? I do think it goes away, um, or at least reduces. This, it's, a, it's a very, you know, daily operation. So um, since I've been working on the CBIT, uh, certainly everything has died down. Dr. Freed has noticed that when I walk into the, the office, it, she just sort of feels like I've calmed down a bit. I'm not taking as much. Um, but, of course, you know, other times I'll, I'll, it'll suddenly come back. You know, the holidays, it's busy in New York, it's cold. <coughs> my, uh, my semester at Queens College is sort of coming to a close, so there are changes that just uh, I inevitably react to. Because I'm so sensitive to change, mm -hmm. um, but that said, it's you know it's five steps forward, three steps back at, at, at its worst. So, so I'm really excited to see where else it takes me. Um, because incidentally, when I was in high school, um, I got really into meditation for a certain period, and <clears throat> obviously I had a lot of ticks then. But at some point, re learned through this meditation that I could kind of focus on um, the muscles creating each tick. And just calm them down and just wait for urges to pass and I could kind of like I had a stab at kind of not taking and being normal mm -hmm. but I didn't know anything beyond that so it was kind of just like you know postponing the urge which always came back and doing this it's 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 essentially the same thing but it's it's more organized and I have I have help so um, it can make a lot of difference yeah, yeah. yeah. so speaking <laughs> about a lot going on right now Tell me how the um, Tourette's affects your being an actor. I would imagine <coughs> being on stage would be very exciting and arousing. Um, does that bring out the tics? Are you able to keep the focus so that it ticks? I'm able to calm control? it down and, and, and not tick. And I, and I actually don't have to think about it the way I do you know, right now or out in the streets <coughs> or at work. I, um, <coughs> like most people with Tourette's, I have that ability um, that comes naturally to me, and, and when I'm in that, um, um, uh, when I'm doing that, the ticks just go away on their own. I, I can't explain it, but it's you know I'm in the zone and they're just not happening. Um, you know, and again, there are a lot of people with Tourette's who have some sort of ability. I mean, Tim Howard, the famous goalkeeper, um, does not take when he's when he's playing. Um, there was of course the famous brain surgeon who had wild, violent physical ticks. Um, and was a very successful brain surgeon who never made a mistake. <laughs> so yeah, um, so I, you know, I, when I talk to other people with Tourette's, which I do more and more, <coughs> um, everyone seems to have <coughs> something that uh, is similar to what I'm talking about. Oftentimes, it's in in, in the arts. Um, people tend to have something kind of creative. I think partially because our minds just work differently, um, and we can't quite conform to sort of. Um, the you know the status quo of uh, you know how people learn how people interact and work um, and I think that's quite um, similar to how it is just being an artist mm -hmm. uh, but yeah to answer your question no I'm, I'm luckily tick free when I'm on stage mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a very successful show a one man show about the elephant in every room about Tourette's yeah. and you actually do demonstrate some ticks in the in the show. How does that work? Can you kind of turn it on and turn it off? It's a really good question. Um, yeah, so my solo show, The Elephant in Every Room I Enter, mm -hmm. which is about my life with Tourette's and um, my visit to the uh, 2014 Tourette Association of America National Conference uh, in, D in D.C. <laughs> is um, a wildly um, <coughs> brilliant show. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it is, um, it's a really interesting experience because unlike other work I've done as an actor, I'm not really hiding behind a character, I'm directly addressing the audience. Mm -hmm. So it's produced challenges that I hadn't experienced in the past where I'm talking to the audience and I think, I think because it was such a personal show, I, I would actually tick. So that's an exception to what I said before, like doing this show, talking about myself really deeply. Um, talking about Tourette's <coughs> would bring up the occasional real tick. Um, 
as I've done it more, that happens less and less. Um, but as you say, yeah, I am imitating other people I've met um, with and doing their tics. So those, that's pure acting. Like I'm not doing my tics when I do that. Um, but it has been a really unique experience for me um, because I've had to sort of just re-understand how um, I am on stage. It's, it's a really bizarre thing. But the show has been incredibly freeing um, and just very exciting. And people's responses have been interesting because <laughs> obviously a lot of people at Tourette's <coughs> have come to see it and you know a lot of people from the TIA and whatnot. Um, and they have, uh, <coughs> they relate to it, but... Also, people with different disabilities or none at all will have a, they'll, they'll relate to it in some way, um, which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure to uh, catch up with you and to hear about the show. Thank you so much. This is really exciting.